Hi guys, welcome back. Um, Dream Queen here. Sorry, just gotta have a couple of things open and things that I have to do. So I wanted to, first off, say and take time and say thank you to everybody that has watched the videos and has resonated with it. Um, and thank you for all the support. Because, um, honest to God, this is not as easy as it seems. This, like, literally freaks me out, having to get out here and talk about certain things. But, nor here or there. Last night, uh, last night, last night, oh my God, I'm tired. So, my little one started school today, and my oldest um, turned 14. So, I've been up, like, baking and doing things. So, I've been up since, like, about 4.30 this morning. Anyways, um, <laughs> last night, as I was falling asleep, I kept um, hearing, not the actual song, but the beat to a certain song. And I thought it was a different song. And I'm like, okay, it sounds similar to something, but it wasn't it. So I was like, okay. So when I was waking up, it was the same song. But then I actually started hearing the lyrics. But I'm like, okay, who sings that? And what's the freaking name? And like I was singing the song in my head, but I still couldn't remember who sang it or, you know, the name of the song. So I called my daddy, obviously. So... Growing up, um, my parents and my aunts and uncles, everybody used to listen to like old classical Spanish music. So, um, bolero, um, salsa, a whole bunch of other stuff. So there's one salsa in particular that I have always listened to. And, you know, you dance to it and stuff like that. But so when you're dancing and things, you really don't pay attention to the lyrics. So when the song was coming to mind, I'm like, but why? Like, <laughs> wouldn't that be like... A message for like a specific person so I was like okay let me see because I've heard the song and you know I know the lyrics so I thought I did but I had never read the lyrics and like I said again the song is in Spanish um, the name of the song is El Gran Barón by Willy Colón and I'm gonna post the information at the bottom even if you don't speak Spanish and you're drawn into listening to it um, maybe something will resonate and if at a certain verse um, throughout the song you feel um, a little more emotional a little stronger and you want to know what that translates to that specific verse or whatever definitely show me an email anywho so the song is so he's talking about a boy that was born back in 19 I want to say 1950 1956 if I'm not mistaken yeah so he was born in 1956 and his father was so excited and proud because he has a boy so the name of the song if you translate it is called the great man so he was raised just as everyone else basically like as his siblings as everyone else there was no special treatment or anything like that it was you know a typical back in the day household where parents were strong you know if you had to get your ass whoop you would get your ass whoop that's basically like what the song is stating and he goes into let me see because i don't want to miss part of it so the boy the boy's name is um, Simon, Simon, and you know, he never expressed his feelings. He never had opinions. He never had anything. He just followed the rules and did as he was told. And you know, he was expected to follow in his father's footsteps. You're, you're expected to, you know, do work in the same fields or study the same things as your father and things like that. Well, when he was old enough, he left. And when they said he left, so then, um, so he basically left like his country. He came to the U.S. And while he was here in the U.S., he basically just forgot. In a, in an essence, I don't want to say that he forgot like completely, but once he got here, he was able to be himself. Something that he had to suppress while he was back home with you know his family and things like that. So then they say that one day his father came over to the States to visit without um, letting him know. So he came to surprise him. And as he, his father was walking down the streets, 
and, and it goes into details before this happens. So it starts to say like once he was here and he started being himself, he starts to dress different. He starts to wear um, makeup and use a purse and, you know, shoes. So we we'll know where this is going. So he was actually um, a transgender back in 19, like, you know, in the 1960s, 1970s, I would say more. But leaving his home country and leaving his family behind and coming to a new country, um, nobody knew who he was. So he was able to embrace who he was. And I don't want anybody to misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm not saying that this message is for people that are transgender. I am reading what the song says. And then I'm going to let you know what I get from it. So, you know, as the father was walking down the streets and, you know, when he got to the area where the son lived, he goes, a female approaches him as he's walking by and says, oh, hi, daddy. And he goes like, oh, you don't recognize me. I'm your son, the great man. <laughs> I thought it was kind of cool like that he said it like that, like, you know, el gran barón. Like, you know, this is what, you know, you had this image of what you wanted me to be. And you had these expect expectations of myself, of, of me, I mean. But you never allow me to blossom. You never allow me to have, an, to have an opinion. You never allow me to express how I felt. So this is who I am. So, so then the father obviously is furious. Um, he breaks all contacts with the son and goes back home throughout the years he he's upset and he's kind of giving up hope that his son is going to change and the son continues to live his life in the states by himself you know without his family and gives up as far as trying to communicate so he gives up trying to get his family especially his father to understand who you know who she is because at this moment she is a she not a he and so the father is furious, obviously. So then one day, the father gets a phone call letting him know that his son had died. So they say that his son died. Um, let me see if I can figure out. So he was born in 1956, and he died in 1986, in the summer. So he was born in... He was born in the summer he died in the summer so he was um 30 when he died and he died in a room all by himself with no family nobody cried nobody was there he was all alone um they say that he died from a strange um disease or condition um you know whatever nor here nor there but then the lyric goes into um there's one verse that i really like and it says no se puede corregir a la naturaleza Basically, what that translates is that nature cannot be corrected. So you are born exactly how God or, you know, universe source, or here nor there, um, labels are just labels, how you were supposed to be born. With that being said, you know, not everyone's case in relationships to their parents are as extreme as the the song states but it also says um where's the other part that i really liked um i think it's towards the end i'm sorry uh i want to say because then i want to be able to translate it Okay, so he said, sorry. So there's a, a point that says, hay que tener compasión, basta ya de moraleja, en que está libre de pecado, que, el que está libre de pecado, que, que tire la primera, la primera piedra. So, uh, I hate reading from like my phone, because it's like so, the other phone is like so small, the words. I should have written it down, right? I know thought about it afterwards so basically what he's saying is that it's time that we all and i mean this song was released i mean i was born in 87 not gonna lie and this is like stuff that my 
parents listened to when I was a kid. So this is an older song. Anywho, so basically what he's saying is that it's time for us to have compassion and stop living life based on morality. And I'm not saying for people not to have morals. What I'm saying is whose morals are you following when you're, when, you're say, when you're stating that you have certain morals? Are they your morals or are they morals that are instilled into you from other people and from people's opinion or certain religions or whatever it is? Then he goes into saying, um, uh, where is it? I keep losing <laughs> Okay, uh, I see that one. And then the other part, part, el que está libre de pecado. So whoever is free of sin to cast on the first stone, que tiene la primera piedra. So none of us are free of sin, as we know, because we sin in every single day of our lives. Um, just because you don't go out there and kill somebody or molest somebody or um, rape somebody or verbally say something to somebody in a negative way does not mean that we don't sin we are constantly um though those that become aware that even with our thoughts we sin then what we try to do is that we try to shift our mind so that it occurs less and less and less but just as simple as if let's say i'm outside and i see a girl wearing something and i'm like oh my gosh she really shouldn't have been wearing that in a, in a sense, I'm, I'm sinning because I am casting judgment on somebody. Why? What I'm doing is a sin. Like, you know, people honestly wanted, want to say that like sinning and things like that have to be these huge things when they're not. So that was, you know, I like that part of the, the song, you know. And I listened to the song like three times today. <laughs> And then it says, El que nunca perdona tiene destino cierto de vivir amarga, amargados recuerdos en su propio infierno. Basically meaning that those who choose to not forgive somebody or, you know, forgive in general, are destined to live in, in a sad, like in a sadness, in, in the memory of the sadness of their own hell yeah in the memory of the sadness of their own hell because if you just choose to take up and just forgive somebody then you're liberating yourself whether the other person um changed or not or the other person agree, starts to agree with you or not as long as you forgive them and you understand that there's really not much that you can do. You cannot change. Sorry, I'm just trying to close this up. You cannot change anyone's mind. People are going to um, believe what they want to believe. And yes, we are going through a transition in this world where people are becoming more aware and are awakening. But with that being said, not everyone is ready to be woken and it is a sad thing to say and it is something that most of us don't want to hear because since we you know this whole this whole twin flame journey and this whole journey of wanting to to have everybody at the same frequency that we are and to have everybody have the feeling of how can i put it of like love, like unconditional love, is something that we want to share with everybody, and it's something that we want everybody to reach, to accomplish. But at the same time, if if people choose not to, there's really not much that we can do as 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 an aspect as far as to that particular individual. The only thing that we can do is to continue on living in our truth and to continue on doing the things that we're doing and continue encouraging and supporting the people that do want to learn, do want to change, and want to come into their own truth and not the truth that has been told by either their parents or their families or their friends or anybody else. So 
you know, I really wasn't sure when I, like I said, when I heard the, the song, yeah, last night, I didn't hear the lyrics. I just, it was just the, the beat to the song kept on playing in my head. And then when I heard the lyrics this morning, I'm like, I feel like that's like, and in essence, because when I heard the song, I was just associating it with that just just that one simple aspect of a, the transgender. But it's more, it's bigger than just that. The transgender situation is just what he chose to put in the song to get the message across. That it doesn't matter how you're born. How you're born is how you were meant to be born. It is who you are and is who you're meant to embrace and is who you are meant to be in this world. And it, again, it's something that is hard because in a lot of the time, a lot of the times that means that we lose those that are closest to us because we're going against everything that they are against. We're going against what society calls um, is morality. And we have to understand that in order, in my opinion anyways, for, in order for something to be moral, it has to be an even playing field. It, it cannot be a moral thing when it benefits one group over another. It has to be a equal playing field all the way across. And I think that's where we, um, as a race, have really lost our touch because in any religion that really you go into, it's all, when they, if you really listen to like different people speak, it's all about what benefits them and texts and verses in the bible and certain things are all used or manipulated so that people can get their point across and in an essence you know that is what we all do and where the issue is is like okay i'm telling you like okay if i use a, a bible verse it is going to speak to me based on what I'm going on, what's going on in my life right now. So I'm giving you my interpretation of the verse, correct? But I'm not going to force you to believe that that interpretation is the only interpretation. This is my interpretation because my interpretation of a verse in the Bible or in any other religious um, book that I read is based on my relationship with God. Because I, that's what I call him, call him God, universe. Now, the problem when it comes to religion, and this is going to get long, shoot. No, okay. Um, the problem when it comes to religion is like, okay, so one person, let's say a religious, um, a religious, religious leader has an interpretation of a verse in the Bible. And... A religion, let's say, is created, you know, let's say, I don't want to choose a, a specific religion because I don't want to, that's a whole other topic. And I've been in different religions, let's just put it that way. Because I always felt like there was something missing in other different types of religion that I have been in. Um, something was always missing, let's just put it that way. But let's say a verse is used. And it's interpreted by a religious leader. And if you do not agree with that interpretation, then you're wrong. Because this is what, you know, this leader 100 or 200 years ago said that it meant. And it cannot be changed. Everything in this world changes so fluently. So I don't... It's hard for me to to believe that one verse can only be used to like one one you know like one specific um, interpretation, and that it has to be just that one. Because if you look completely like if you look around us, seasons change, things grow, things die. There's you know the sun comes up, the moon comes out, the sun goes down. There's rain or snow. There's so many things. So why? do we want to limit people into believing that my way is the only way we should be encouraging people to find their way 
their interpretation of what a certain thing something means to them like you know i'm holding the cards and no i'm not pulling any cards today i don't think so anyways and this is you know this has been a this has been a struggle for me for this and my water glass with my candle that i do has been a struggle because of other people's interpretation of it and you know if you've you know you've seen my other videos you know that i don't read them based on what they would normally mean it's what i feel and like i i, I literally i want to cry right now and i don't feel sad but i feel this immense ache that so many people have constantly suppressed who they are because they don't want to be judged and because they don't want to miss p they don't want to miss out on certain things and because they don't want to let go of certain people and the only thing I can say to that, it's going away, I had to say that, is if you're watching these videos and everyone else that I follow or any, you know, you're into all of these and you want to get more knowledge and you want to learn and you want to know who your truth self is, one of two things are going to happen. You're either intentionally going to start doing the work yourself or situations are going to happen that are gonna force you to do the work. And your, your inner self, you, your subconscious is gonna let you get away with so much to a certain point but it's going to get to a point where it is going to be like i tried a hundred times to tell you to show you to make you feel and understand that this is what you're meant for and when you ignore it and you ignore it and you ignore it it will find a way <laughs> to get your attention it will. Mine, my main focus was work. Then being the perfect mom. I bake from scratch. I make dishes from scratch. I cook from scratch. I can cook for a party of 300 with no problem. Whether it's my party or not. I love cooking. I can build a dresser. I can build an island. I can change tires. I can do a lot of things. But those things I was, I learned to do because I wanted to form certain connections, whether it was with my mother or my father or other people, and I wanted to just spend more time. And because I like learning too. But I became so consumed in being just the best nurse that I could be. Certain names were said that I didn't become aware of until I left work because of the way that I was, because I loved what I did. So I put my entire heart into it and I'm a Capricorn. So I'm a go-getter and I don't back down. And my I took a lot of pride in my job. I'm not gonna lie. I know it's a little <laughs> egoistic, but my thing was I had other people's lives in my hands. Um, when it came to events, when it came to things, I was always helping. I was always, um, making things like souvenirs or throwing, you know, putting together parties and decorating parties and cooking and this and that. And at the end of the day, I was always drained. And then it became that my ego got so big that I stopped asking. I wouldn't ask for help. 
I had it. I could handle everything. I could do 120 things at once all by my damn self. Um, no, you can't. And even if you can't, you're not meant to. Let's put it that way. So I knew that there was something that I was supposed to be doing that was not going to be accepted by those closest to me. And the fear of losing people around me stopped me for many years. Um, my subconscious got to a point that I had enough and things started to manifest in my body and they started to manifest quick, fast. Um, within two, within a year, within three months of being diagnosed, um, they wanted to pull me out of work and I fought. Oh my God, I fought like crazy. Um, and I switched doctors so I could find one that would allow me to stay at work for at least another year or two. And she agreed and she also agreed to try alternative things because I told her, you know, with my history of medications issues that we were having and a year went by and I was told by the doctor that I had a year to prepare and I didn't. I didn't mentally prepare. And when, see, to me that having to stop working was what you would call quote unquote rock bottom. What broke me as a person was looking back at my childhood and looking back of the things that were held at higher standards and values by other people and how at this point in my life I was twenty I was twenty nine, I couldn't managed to even get out of bed by myself at times. So it broke me to my core where I had to look at all of that and try to figure out why I felt the way that I did. Why was I feeling so worthless? Because I couldn't work in an environment that was expected of me. Or I didn't have the normal sleep schedule that other people have. And the, the sweetest thing is when people tell me, well, just go take a nap. That is awesome advice. But when you have narcolepsy with cataplexy, you have no control over your internal clock. Meaning your body is going to sleep when it wants to. It is going to rest when it wants to. And other things come into play with that that I speak about it in my other channel. And my first thing was always, why me? Why me? And, you know, in an essence, everything is kind of starting to get to place because if it wasn't me, and if I would have never been diagnosed with narcolepsy, even though, you know, they say I've had it since I was a baby, then where would I be right now? I would be working like a dog no let me not say like a dog because i really i i've had the pleasure to work for um facilities offices whatever medical offices that really took care of their um their employees so i think that's what made it harder if i was at the point where i hated my job or i hated my co-workers i think it would have been easier when i was pulled out but the fact that I had such a huge support system at work with like my supervisors, the owners and everybody like, I mean, these people went above and beyond for my kids. Like one Christmas, it was like over $3,000, like just give stuff that they had asked for because I had been out of work for a while prior to being diagnosed. And I think that was my first step into allowing myself that, you know, Yes, these people encourage you and love you and everything, but the time there was up for me. What I had to learn there was up for me. Whatever somebody there had to learn from me, the time was up. It was done. And I didn't listen right away. I came home and I, I regressed. I dug a hole and literally put myself in there and I was just... I was trying to figure out, no joke, a way to trick my body so that I could go back to work. 
I became obsessed for like about six months doing like looking for research in other countries and other things that have worked for people that have the condition that I have and one day I just broke down and I cried out to God and I was like what the is going on here and he brought me back to something he had said prior a couple of years before about twin flame that I totally ignored and he showed me certain things and I remember crying that that feeling of like I get it it was it was a cry like uh it wasn't like a sad cry it was a I don't even know how to explain it it was just like this overwhelming like feeling I want to say of like love but it was like an a love that I've never felt before that got me so overwhelmed that I just went into tears and then of course <laughs> I turned to not follow rules right away I sat in them, I sat up and I started taking notes of the things that I'm gonna do and I'm gonna do it this way and I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that and I'm, I can't do that I could do this and <laughs> I know God has a lot of patience with me because I have direct <laughs> you know guidance and things that I have to do and I still kind of want to do things my own way and just recently I was like you know what F this what is it just tell me what you want me to do I'm just gonna do it I'm not even gonna question it anymore I'm not even gonna try to put logic into it because I put logic into everything I want everything to be logical I want everything to make sense I want to know the you know the beginning the middle the end what could happen you know if this happens I want to have three plans behind it you know uh, a B and C of what you know how we're gonna fix an issue and that has been my struggle that is what I battle on a day-to-day -day basis the wanting to know the step-by-step -step. so that is something that I have to work in me all the time but I was only allowed to do I'm only allowed to do that because I stopped believing what other people had told me and just started following what was in here in here and just living my life the way I want to live it I have a saying it says live the life you imagined so are you ready to live the life you imagined Are you ready to let go of certain beliefs? Are you ready to let go of certain people? When they catch up to you in a vibrational spiritual sense, they will be reintroduced to your life. If they choose to be one of those that choose not to do the work, then you're never going to go without you're never going to go without people. You're never going to go without anything. So why worry? That's about it. Well, yeah, I need to work on making these shorter. <laughs> Guys, thank you for watching. Um, I want to get some videos out. I did say that I wanted to do the individual signs. Um, not sure if I'm going to be able to do that tonight because I'm not exactly sure what we're going to do with my oldest. But we'll see if not so i decided to do a little something different so underneath um in the description i'm gonna put um a link to i made like a little like a little movie trailer that has like it shows like you know little things but then under the description in the movie trailer link that's what i say we'll have my personal email if anybody has any questions or um want any clarity on anything that i have said um to my spotify um link to my personal um songs that i usually resonate with and listen to the spanish song is not on that one i could share because that's another i have a spanish I, I have like six or seven different lists for different things like things that i listen to when i'm cleaning and different things so yeah i'm not organized <laughs> sorry uh, and they have to be in a specific order. anyways <laughs> nor here nor there but 
Um, and it has also the links for Jupiter 1111 and Sophia. And I am working, I'm going to be working on adding the other follow, the other people that I follow, the other channels, and adding their links as well. So as time change, like, you know, as time goes, that link, um, that description list will definitely be updated. But as of right now, it has my personal email. It has my other two YouTube, um, channels where i speak about my medical condition it has um jupiter 1111 and it has sophia um jupiter 1111 is whom i got my masculine my gym get your masculine package um it wasn't that long ago i don't even think it's been like a month i don't even think so no i think it's only like three weeks maybe <laughs> No, I was, just, I, I was hesitant to get it too. I mean, the first time she spoke about it, something inside of me told me to get it. And I was like, nope, I kept putting excuses. And then one day I was like, okay, I don't have the money. So if, that's what I said, if, because I know that if I say things a certain way, I can delay something. So I said, oh, if I could come up with the money, I'll get it. And not even an hour later money unexpectedly <laughs> unexpectedly respect whatever that word is came through and then automatically i'm like oh i need to get and i was like oh sure i can't because right away like every time i get income i want to go buy stuff for the kids and it was like no mama this is for you and i was like oh. and i remember i filled out the info and i put the information into pay and i took a nap <laughs> I was like, I really need to think about this. And this is, I'm always battling this. I take care of, and you know, self-care. Not as far as like working out and stuff like that, but I've, I've had this issue with spending money on myself because my mother has always said how everything she had was always for us. So for me to spend, you know, $20, like even $20 on myself is like, to me, that's like a huge thing. But I can spend like two or $300 on a pair of sneakers for like my oldest without any problem but to me it's like i don't want to spend 50 dollars on shoes for me. but you know these are all things that you have when you become aware of you're like wait no like i am worth whatever the heck i want to get so i got it and i still remember i sent i i hit you know submit or whatever the heck it was and i was like oh my god i really could have used that money to get the kids this and this and this and, that. and i was like you know what just snap out of it like you've been to Ireland long enough so i got it and to be honest with you i'm just so happy i did Happy. <laughs> Anyways, now I really have to stop talking. Oh, look, something wanted to come up. The King of Wands. Why did I want to? See? This is the King of Wands, right? But the what wanted to keep on coming out was the Page of Wands. So with that, I just want to say, <sighs> whoa, that was weird. Um, hmm, why did I want to say the page of wands? Okay. And I said I wasn't going to pull cards, right? These are the three cards that came after the six of swords the eight of swords and the four of swords so to me and i don't want to say dm or df i'm just going to say your counter person your divine counter partner is they're struggling emotionally internally um with more than what you could imagine a lot of you, whoever's watching, you're you're struggling. I want to say more. I want to say um, mentally, internally, mentally, because you are unclear of all of this that your counterpart is going through so you're making things bigger 
than what they are when they're not if that makes any sense and then we have the the four of swords and for me is the four of swords represent that he he or she is trying to just balance everything out that they have to balance out so that they so the communication to me feels like right now it may feel that the communication with your counterpart is more of a page of of wands that's why i kept i wanted to call this a page of wands when in reality if you take a step back and you listen to the little information that they're giving you their communication is actually a king of wands and not a page it is coming to us as a page or we're receiving it as a page because we are internally mentally perceiving things in a different way or we are not opening up enough or having enough awareness of what it is that they're going through if that makes any sense huh that's it i didn't want to pull cards but you know, and people see swords and they're like, oh my God, da, 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 problem fights. No, I don't know. I don't get that. Because like I said, when I pulled it, I kept looking at it and I'm like, but that's a king. And it's like, and it's like, no. And then I get it now. It's like, you know, they're in their six of swords um, mentally and emotionally fighting, fighting all these battles. But then we are here putting ourselves mentally through all this torture like why is he or she only saying a b c i want to know about this i want to know about that so we're perceiving the communication that they're giving us as a page of wands when in reality they're coming to us as a king of wands but we're not allowing ourselves to understand exactly what it is that they're trying to get across because we're just understanding what we want to And they're just trying to balance that communication out. So take a chill pill. Go take a nap. Take a bath. A hot bath. You know. A warm bath with some candles. A nice cup of tea. A cup of water. I take a lot of bath. <laughs> um, and just chill out. And when they say something, if, if it hits you in a certain way, just be like, you know, and just be honest. Like, I need a minute to process that. And take your time and just process it. But just don't react right away to what they're saying. So, I would stamp that. I think it started like a, it's only a couple of minutes. But, um, you know, whatever. I don't know. People are going to say I talk too much. I really don't care. I, I talk. I think that's why I miss working. I still love talking. Anyways, guys, um, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.